Welcome back to the show, everybody. It may be Saturday morning, but that doesn't mean we ain't got some news. We got a lot of news this morning. Uh, Russia, Ukraine, and SWIFT and crypto becoming a full-blown narrative now. EU analyzing Russia banned from SWIFT and why it hasn't been done already. ECB's European Central Bank's Christine Lagarde and power oversight forces the release of the SEC emails. There's more to come. Update on SEC versus Ripple and the legal team fires back on the Ripple side of the fence. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above and everything that we're talking about here today. 1.770 market cap for crypto. Not a lot of money in this space, but we'll keep an eye on it. We know there's a lot going on. Praying for the people in Ukraine right now and their safety of all their families. I just talked to a friend yesterday whose mother and father are still living in Ukraine. So praying for their safety and everybody there. Up 2.44% right now. Bitcoin is 38,800 plus. Ethereum, 2,700 plus right now. XRP is 75 cents, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and look at the range of price really quickly here. 70 cents on the bottom and 79 cents on the top. Let's get started right here. So Ripple is still available on link to whether you want to make sure your investment or you want to make your first investment, excuse me, or increase your position at link2.com. Get those links in the description and comment section. BNY Mellon, a major investment bank, is developing a digital asset custody platform that will allow institutional customers to gain exposure. So while all of this is going on around the world, lack of clarity, war and conflict, the largest players in the space continue to march towards what we know is going to be a brand new asset class with regulation at some point, I might, I might add. But let's take a look here because this is the section you really need to get out of here. According to the report from City AM, customers will be able to store the world's most popular cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum in BNY Mellon crypto wallets, which will be powered by Fireblocks technology. However, once regulatory approval has been granted, the service will gradually increase and integrate a variety of tokenized traditional and digital assets. So they're going to move into tokenizing traditional uh, products as well. So that to me is showing huge signs that look, this is not just about, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP, right? This is about the entire world being digitized and tokenized. That's how big this is. And looking right here, does Bitcoin volatility suggest a recovery? Let's take a listen to this. This is Leo Halperin uh, talking with Peter Schiff, gold guy. And let's check it out first. Follow you on Twitter. I've been seeing what you've been saying. And I mean, if you look at the last five years, gold is actually up only around 39%. It's not really done anything, whereas Bitcoin is up 3,200%. Perhaps we live in an entirely new era and in, in, in a new time where my generation, millennials, actually do see value in, in something which is digital rather than something which is tangible. Peter, well, all young seconds. generations make all young generations make mistakes. Bitcoin has crashed many times over the last yeah. five years. And, it's and just come credit, back every time. It comes back well, pretty, next, pretty strong. Time, we got, we got right, to leave it, it there. But because it doesn't always strong. come back, Charles. Uh, One time it's going to crash and never come back. All right, well, let's leave it there. Uh and that's where you have it right there. Now, what I want to add to that is, is first of all, Bitcoin's technology. So I think it will be here, right? It will certainly be here and not go away. I do believe that. However, I do want to remind everybody out here that the European Union may be, European Union Parliament may be, looking, not maybe, they are looking to ban Bitcoin and proof of work mining in the European Union. That's around 27 countries. Now we know China's already done it and they're moving, as I reported yesterday, to uh, make uh, cryptocurrency transactions illegal. So, you know, this is going to force everybody bottleneck into some kind of central bank digital currency like the digital yuan there, 
right? Or a stable coin if it's allowed. You know, you can see the motion of what's happening. What we don't yet know is if the European Union will follow through fully in the steps of China and do it. And then if they do it, you have to wonder if the United States does it. It doesn't mean you can't buy and hold Bitcoin. It just means you can't go in and out to a merchant or service by using that cryptocurrency, you'll be forced to go through either an approved stable coin or a central bank digital currency. This is something we have been talking about on this channel for a long time, and we will follow this very closely to see what happens. And, you know, you know, I like gold. So need, need I say more about that as much as I like XRP. EU is analyzing Russia ban from SWIFT payment system. Now, what's interesting about this is, number one, why wasn't Russia ejected from SWIFT bank system already? Yeah, this is what Charles Gasparino has been asking, as well as many other people. Well, take a look at why. Because they talk about the damage that could be done to Europe and all of the people that they're trading oil with, because apparently Russia is like the third biggest oil producer in the world. But take a look at this piece of this article here. By politicizing SWIFT, you give incentive for others to develop alternatives. A senior fellow of the Atlantic Council at, uh, and former Treasury official told the Associated Press, goes on to say, a ban also risks interrupting exports of Russia's oil and gas resources, placing further strain on the energy market when oil is already trading near $100 a barrel. Further impacts to international trade and imports could hurt the economies of other nations. <laughs> People are dying, right? And some analysts warn Russia could try to use cryptocurrencies as an alternative to SWIFT exacerbating regulatory concerns in the process. Now, there's been people in crypto Twitter that have told us we're not allowed to talk about the fact that crypto has become a real narrative at obfuscating SWIFT's messaging system for Russia. I've shown you evidence that Russia has put out press releases that they have already built and done deals with their new financial system with China, 30-year deal to use the euro over fuel through China and Russia deals instead of the dollar. Things are happening, whether we like it or not. Now, listen, I'm not jumping up and down because first and foremost is the safety of everybody in Ukraine and their family. This needs to go away. The, you know, the, 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 the day in the human race where we have conquerors should be over. And there's enough of us in the world and world leaders around here that they could make that stop yesterday if they wanted to. But it's a very, very real thing here that the German foreign minister is talking about. A swift ban could be harmful to innocent individuals attempting to conduct overseas business. A number of countries are hesitant since it is a serious consequence for themselves, said the Dutch prime minister. But we go on here because now Christine Lagarde calls for crypto regulation. And there's even more evidence that we were right to begin with to understand that beyond the narrative of war itself, a very, very real narrative now jumping up is cryptocurrency regulations because Russia could possibly use digital assets to evade economic sanctions. Well, I wonder if there is a digital system that they could use to really rein all this in if we see a huge fracture globally in the payment messaging system of SWIFT. Maybe RippleNet, maybe. You know, looking right here, this gentleman lays it down too. Take a listen. Russia, China, Iran, and many other countries don't like the domination the United States has over the SWIFT system, and it really is only a matter of time before there are multiple systems. Bitcoin is already functioning to a degree like that. So this would be a very dangerous step because it would accelerate the end of the SWIFT monopoly. And how about that? Now, that's not a crypto guy talking about that. That is actually a political analyst telling you about the... the now, he doesn't realize Bitcoin is slow, and he don't think he realizes that Bitcoin's not as anonymous as people once thought it was. 
right? Because it can obviously be tracked. But the reality here is, is there is a huge narrative now calling for something to be able to serve to bring this fractured world back together because these economies are all connected. And we see that there are other countries right now worried about themselves other than the safety of others. Let's change gears. This is powerful, powerful news. And shout out to Jason Foster and his team at Empower Oversight. SEC releases emails to Empower Oversight in crypto conflict lawsuit. Still searching for more. A thousand plus emails were released to Empower Oversight. I've looked through the majority of them very quickly, and I didn't see anything very direct at this point, but is as John Deaton says here, the emails that we have received from the uh, efforts of Jason Foster at Empower Oversight are narrowly focused. What we have so far is a very small portion of relevant documents. It's only emails between Hinman and Berger and any address with a Simpson Thacker email. So, we need to be very patient. This is just the beginning, I believe, of many, many more that are going to come. Jason Foster, you are a hero as John Deaton is to this community. Ripple Labs did not just seek advice on securities rules, but also on a variety of banking, anti-money laundering, and tax legislation. The SEC should have examined the Perkins Coe memoranda and used Ripple as an example of proactive compliance. That's what we're talking about here. We know about that letter. We know about that legal analysis that Ripple had done by Perkins Coie and how they changed what they were doing. And it should have been an example to the rest of the crypto space how to move forward and be proactive, compliant without regulations being in the space. But look, there's an update here and we all need it. It's James K. Filan and Jeremy Hogan here. And basically James K. Filan tells us 14 hours ago, Ripple and the individual defendants have filed their opposition to the SEC's motion for partial reconsideration and clarification of Judge Netburn's DPP ruling, noting that the SEC is simply seeking a do-over. Jeremy Hogan says here, wow, I expected Ripple to come out swinging and this brief did not disappoint. Matt Solomon wrote the brief. This is the hardest hitting brief thus far in the litigation, and rightfully so, it says. Let's take a quick look here because it is extremely powerful. I read it last night. Take a look here, and I will give you just a piece so you get the tone of it if I can get it to come up here. There we go. So it says here, uh, basically, the SEC's motion is inappropriate attempt at a do-over simply because it is unhappy with the court's order on its prior briefing. The SEC makes no pretense that the demand standard for reconsideration is satisfied here. Instead, it seeks to yet again brief an issue that has been extensively litigated for nearly a year, but this time based on a new theory and a reversal of course. Ignoring its prior briefing and sworn declaration and procured from former director, Corporation Finance, William Hinman, in which the SEC maintained that Mr. Hinman's speech simply expressed the personal views of the speaker, a position the SEC now knows cannot support its privileged claim. The SEC now argues for the first time that the speech was accumulation of and reflected a policy process with the Division of Corporate Finance. This reversal contradicts Mr. Hemmings' sworn statement. Likewise, with neither permission nor apology, the SEC submits a brand new five-page declaration in blatant violation of local rules from someone who knows, has no first-hand knowledge of the matter attested to. It goes on and on in a scathing way and showing like uh, William Hinman's testimony, his answers and support of everything here. Matthew Solomon was on fire. Bam, boom, bam, bam, boom, dun. Uh, yeah, so we're going to keep an eye on it because it does appear that the uh, the wind is gathering again in Ripple sails, and we will keep an eye on that and everything that we talked about here today. Before we get out of here, let's take a look at this. What's going on with XRP charts and what may lie ahead here? 
Dark Defender says no to war, and I do too. Dear all, XRP closed with a bullish pin bar and a daily candle yesterday. The Ichimoku uh, cloud is about to be broken at 85 cents is the key. Above 85 cents target will be 133. 133 is broken. It'll be 203 will be in play. Supports are the same. 75 cents, 70 cents, and 61 cents should we fall to the lower side. That's where we are on this day. I'm going to give you a look at the chart really quickly so you can see what's going on here. Here's the bullish pin he was discussing. We'll see where we are. And we'll see if we can climb back and get above that 85 cent mark. And if so... If that will hold true to allow us to chase down that 133 and maybe some of these upper targets. But I remind everybody that we don't have regulatory clarity. We don't have the end and res resolution to this case, right? So there's a lot ahead that needs to happen, I believe, in the fundamental news to affect the technical because I believe they both go together so well. But that's going to do it for me. Not financial advice from me or anyone else, just my digital perspectives. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, leave a comment below, share with somebody you know, and I'll catch all of you on the next one.